SharePoint eSignature is a feature of Microsoft Syntex or SharePoint Premium that allows you to gather signatures directly from a SharePoint document library. In my recent video on SharePoint Premium, I covered a number of Syntex features, but I thought this feature deserves being covered separately. So stick with me as we find out what SharePoint eSignature is, how you enable and use it, see a demo of creating a signature request, and compare it to its main competition, Adobe Sign and DocuSign. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCourcy. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. If you're interested in learning more about working with me or getting a copy of my book, there are links below where you can get more information. SharePoint eSignature is part of SharePoint Premium and is accessed by setting up Microsoft Syntex on your tenant by connecting it to an Azure subscription for pay-as-you-go billing. I'll drop a link below to the Microsoft Adoption website for SharePoint Premium that gives you all the information on how to get started with Syntex. If you have ever used eSignature, either as the initiator or receiver with services such as DocuSign or Adobe Sign, then you already know the basics of what SharePoint eSignature is. The unique selling point for SharePoint eSignature is that it's built directly into SharePoint. You can turn it on across your tenant and then any user able to access SharePoint can initiate a signature request on a pay-as-you-go basis without any additional licensing. Until June 2025, Microsoft is offering monthly free capacity for many Syntex tools in order to help you get started, including eSignature. But beyond June 2025 and beyond that free capacity, signature requests are currently charged at just $2 per request. Because everything happens inside SharePoint, your files don't ever leave your trust boundary for another service, and the whole experience of using SharePoint eSignature looks and feels very familiar to anyone used to using Microsoft 365. I previously published a video here about using DocuSign with Microsoft 365, so if you're looking to compare and contrast, I'll leave a link to that video down below too. So let's jump into a demo where I'll show you how to get set up with SharePoint eSignature and how to use it. As always, my demos are set up with example accounts and data and you never see anyone's private information. Before we start that demo though, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like to help it get in front of more people. And if you're interested in seeing more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. To set up eSignature, you're going to want to access the Syntex setup in the Microsoft 365 admin portal. Click on Setup, and then on Automate Content Processes with Syntex, then go to Syntex Settings. This assumes you have already set up Syntex with a connected Azure billing account. From there, under Documents and Images, click on eSignature, and use the button at the bottom of the flyout to turn on or turn off the service. From here, you can also select which SharePoint sites eSignature will be used in, either all sites or an allow list of up to 100. Once you have it set up, head over to one of the sites you've activated it on to use it. Here, I'm in such a site where I have a document library with just one PDF of an example contract I want to eSign. Bear in mind that this feature is only available for PDFs currently. So I'm just going to open this example contract to take a look at. And you can see it opens in the file previewer in SharePoint. You see I have a few fields here that I'm going to want to um, I'm going to want to fill out using eSignature. So the way that I'm going to go ahead and create a signature request is up here on this ribbon, I have this request signatures button. And as soon as I uh, press that, I get the recipients field here. It's a three-step process to get this set up and sent out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to myself and I'm going to send this to someone else um, so that we can see the experience of getting this completed by two people. So I've got both Megan and Adele um, on this request. So once I've got them in there, I'm going to click Next. And you can see that for each one, I get three different options of what they can fill out. And this is what I'm limited to. I can't create any other options here. So I have a signature, initials, and date. So I'm going to take Megan as the um, contractor, and I'm going to take Adele as the client. So I'm just going to drag across the information that I want in the place that I want it. 
and you can see I've got that where I want it on the contract itself. So once I've got that in place, I'm going to go ahead and click next. And just for, for reference, I, I can request that the same thing goes in multiple places. So if I need initials in multiple places on the form, I can go ahead and add that in in multiple places as well. I just can't create different fields. So I'm just going to click next. It takes me through to my request title. So this is going to be in the email that gets sent out. I can put a message in here if I want to. So I'm just going to say, please sign this. And then I'm going to go ahead and click send. And once you set up that request, you can see you get this message that says it's going to be sent out. And when everyone is signed, I'll receive a confirmation email with a link to where the document is going to be saved. And if I head over to my email, you can see that I've got this request that's been sent in. Um, I get a specific request to me as well to say that I want this to be signed and the other sender gets exactly the same thing or the other recipient gets exactly the same thing and as soon as the other party signs my signature request i get an email letting me know that it has been signed by adele and it's still waiting on me megan so i'm going to go ahead and view this request it's going to take me into the document the first thing you need to do is acknowledge the terms and conditions if you've not used this before i'm going to agree um, and then I can just go through the process of signing this. Um, and as always, you get a little ad um, when you start using something. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in my initials. I'm going to put in my signature. And it automatically puts the date in there. So once I'm ready to submit it, I can go ahead and I can submit my signed document. You see it's added in the signature. It just gives me this notification. And then jumping back to my mail, you can see that it says that I've added my signature. It's now been signed by both parties. And after a little while, I get um, a completion note here. It shows me that I can view the signed document. But if I head back over to my SharePoint site, I can see that I now have a signed copy of my example contract with my signatures. And I also have a verification sheet attached. It is also important to bear in mind that if you're getting people outside of your organization to sign documents, that you have to have the right external sharing options turned on. So you need to look into to that requirement and just make sure that your tenant is going to support those external sharing needs uh, so that people can become guests within your tenant at the point that you want them to sign um, your document. Are you thinking about getting started with Copilot for Microsoft 365? Or have you already started using it in your business? If you're interested in getting my help with your adoption process, my new Copilot for Microsoft 365 adoption package puts together all the consulting and training services most small and medium-sized businesses need when rolling out Copilot and packages them together with one transparent and fully understandable per user price. And if you need something more focused, perhaps you're interested in document automation solutions like SharePoint eSignature, I can work with you on your custom project, giving you the specific help you need to empower your business to its greatest success with Microsoft's technologies. Check out the links below where you can get started with a no obligation introductory call to find out if my services are a good fit for what you need. So who is SharePoint eSignature for? This is not the fully baked e-signature platform you get if you choose to subscribe to a service like DocuSign, Adobe Sign, or many others, both of which already integrate into Microsoft 365 pretty well. As it stands, SharePoint e-signature lacks a lot of the bells and whistles. It's really limited in what fields you can include in the signing request, you can't assign a signing order, and you can't easily change your requests along the way all pretty standard requirements that are part of both DocuSign and Adobe Sign. However, if you choose to subscribe to DocuSign, you're going to be paying at least $15 a month to start with five requests, and probably more like $45 per user per month for any business account flexibility. With Adobe, your commitment might range from around $15 to $25 per user per month. 
For anyone who is a heavy user of eSignature, this pricing will make sense in no time. But if you have a big team where signature requests are distributed or infrequent, this can add up quickly. For a team of 10 using DocuSign to gather 500 signatures per year, just four to five per month each, your cost is nearly $11 per signature request. Comparatively, if you have a team already licensed for Microsoft 365 and your needs are basic enough that your signature request can be handled by SharePoint eSignature, those signature requests can be handled by anyone on the team and they're only going to cost you $2 each, a more than 80% saving. On top of that, you don't have the added complexity of provisioning a different service, training your team to use it, and having to manage documents spread across at least two different locations. For straightforward, highly distributed, or low volume needs, SharePoint eSignature makes a lot of sense. Microsoft has announced that the eSignature functionality in SharePoint will soon integrate both with DocuSign and Adobe, and I suspect that this may create a solution that has the best balance of reducing the complexity for your team while allowing the flexibility of those fully featured tools. The big benefit of this integration is that you can start from SharePoint and the finished signed file will end up in SharePoint, reducing the complexity of multiple versions floating around different systems. This functionality is expected by the end of summer 2024. Beyond this, Microsoft has also announced a new agreements app designed to be a hub for the sort of documents you might need e-signing tools for. But this app will go beyond just Signature to use other SharePoint premium tools to help you manage and analyze your agreements. So far as I'm aware, there is no timing shared on this yet. Drop me a note down in the comments if I'm missing something here but it looks like this will be an exciting release when it does come. So that's SharePoint eSignature in a nutshell. Are you using it in your business? Or has this demo convinced you it's worth checking out? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.